This is small bottle letter one. How quickly the years have flown by since we first set up that message board on an unassuming street corner. Seeing the many and myriad words written there each day never fails to fill our hearts with joy and gratitude. Perhaps most enjoyable of all to, to read are the announcements of various festivities organized by adventurers, gatherings of fellow clansmen, adventurous journeys to far-flung lands, and all sorts of delightful events. We tip our caps to the passionate adventurers who pour their heart and soul into organizing these outings. One might liken them to a lodestone, drawing people in and bringing like minds together wherever they go. Finally, we would express our thanks to all of you who take the time to keep diaries of your journeys. It is a pleasure and honor both to have the privilege of sharing in your, your adventurers. With best wishes, the keepers of the message boards. So this is small bottle letter two. We hear that these days it's all the rage for adventurers to gather in small groups and paint portraits of themselves striking stylish poses. As humble art supply provisioners, all we can do is provide the canvas, the palette, the paint, and the brush by which such works of art can be crafted. And we realize there is much we still must do to allow adventurers to fully realize their aesthetic visions. And yet, seeing the masterworks you are already creating each day instills us with pride and the passion to continue pursuing our craft. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for allowing us to take part in this creative collaboration and look forward to providing you with yet more materials to add to your artist's workshop in the future. Wishing you eternal inspiration, the Art Provisioners of Eorzea. This is small bottle letter three. The other day at the Aetherite Plaza, I happened upon a minstrel cheerfully strumming a tune before an admiring crowd of adventurers and townspeople. Impromptu concerts like these have been happening more and more of late, and I dare say nothing fills our hearts with joy quite like seeing people of all ages, backgrounds, and walks of life bonding over a love of music. To all the talented composers and instrumentalists out there, we thank you for providing a soundtrack to stir our own hearts. We hope that the music of Eorzea has served to render your adventurers, uh, your adventures even richer and more memorable. Ever in harmony with you, a humble instrument maker. This is small bottle letter four. I still remember the day, fresh off the boat after a long voyage across the ruby sea. I strode into the gleaming gold saucer. I found an open space in one of the parlors, set up my table, and began to stack my tiles atop it. Anxiety gripped me to the depths of my potty and soul. What if Eorzeans had no interest in the dome and diversion I sought to provide? Would my long journey prove to be for naught? Fortunately, my worries soon melted away. Within hours, the Manderville tables were teeming with visitors, locals and travelers from afar abroad alike, each more eager than the next to try their hand at the time-honored game of Mahjong. I am no mighty adventurer, and there is only so much I can do for this realm. And so I hope that, in some small way, the game I teach can serve to lighten adventurers' days and relieve them for, from the many burdens they bear. Until we meet at the tables, an anonymous Mejong tutor. And this is small bottle letter, letter five. Lately, there is nothing I enjoy quite so much as walking the streets of Eorzea's residential districts, 
and stopping to admire the many homes open for public viewing. Seeing the furnishings my colleagues and I crafted with love and care, tastefully adorning such warm and welcoming homes, oftentimes in remarkably creative ways, is perhaps the single most enjoyable sight an artisan can experience. At times, the layouts are so eccentric and unconventional that I fear it is only a matter of time before they come crashing to the ground. But I am nonetheless impressed with the sheer creativity on display. As for us, we will do all in our power to continue crafting stylish furnishings and ornaments. May you continue to find joy in decorating your happy homes. With gratitude, a humble woodworker. And this is small bottle letter six. We have no strength to lend you in battle, nor can we craft wondrous items to serve you in your adventures. We can't help you win a fortune at the gold saucer, nor can we lift your spirits with a happy tune. At the end of the day, all we can truly offer is companionship. Whatever small comfort you can derive from knowing that we'll always be at your side. And yet, for some reason, a reason for which we can only thank the gods, that's enough for you. And so we thank you, our friend, our master. Simply say the word and we will follow you to the ends of the world and beyond. For you mean more to us than you will ever know. Your f ever your faithful companions. Your minions. This is medium bottle letter one. The mighty walls of Ulda were not built by one man. There were those that hewed the stones and those that polished them, those that carried them and those that stacked them on one on top the other until they reached the towering height you see today. And it is not just the walls. Much of what you see in the world is, in fact, the sum total of the blood, sweat, and tears of countless men and women whose names and faces you will never see. But there is one more who is essential to truly realize the creation of these wonders, and that is you. For without you, all the efforts of those nameless artisans would be nothing at all. And so we speak in unison when we say, thank you. Always remember that you are the reason we devote ourselves to our craft. With gratitude, the nameless artisans of Eorzea. This is medium bottle letter two. A little bird tells me that Eorzea is a land where many a bard and minstrel plies their trade. Oh, what I would not give to visit that far off land and hear their strummings with mine own ears. Such is the vain dream I hold in my heart each day as I sit in this dark room, pounding away against a great machine of levels, dials, and blinking lights. Countless sounds have been given life in this cool, dank place. Perhaps you have paid special heed to them, but doubtless many if of you have not. There is no shame in this. On the contrary, this is proof that they have formed part of the natural fabric of this world. And yet, at some point in your adventures, if you could pause for even a fleeting moment to take in all the sounds of the living world around you, nothing would give us greater pleasure. Ain't gratitude. An artisan of acoustics. This is medium bottle letter three. To those who make a living in the world of the stage, audience reactions are everything. Each joyous cry, each shed tear, we feel it with you, our audience, and then some. Even when the reviews are harsh, we do not look away. 
We listen to and reflect upon your wor every word, each time vowing to use it to provide more powerful and effective performances going forward. There are times when the poets and playwrights ask more of us than we feel capable of providing, but never do we back down from a challenge. Everything we do, we do it for you, and we thank you for being an ever-appreciative audience. Yours in gratitude, a humble stage director. This is Medium Bottle Letter 4. From vast deserts and verdant forests to deep blue seas, from white-veiled snowfields to exotic townscapes, and sometimes even to distant worlds. Many a vista we have painted on our canvases, from familiar surroundings to far-flung locals. If even one or two of them have left an impression on you, there is nothing that would make us happier. And yet, all we can do is provide the backdrop, the stage on which you, the star of this adventure, will shine. From skies of azure and seas of ruby to the gentle darkness that comes after the light, even while ever will we continue to put brush to canvas that you might bring the worlds to we draw to life, ever with you, a humble landscape artist. This is Medium Bottle Letter 5. Nothing warms my heart quite so much as when I see adventurers about town walking and wearing the clothes and fashions that I designed. At times, the color and outfit combinations are beyond anything I'd ever imagined. This in turn inspires me not to rest on my laurels, but rather to strive to create yet newer and more eclectic fashions. So to you, who I may never meet, and whose names I may never know, I have only this to say. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing the clothes of my creation to walk with you. Yours sincerely, a humble fashion designer. This is Medium Bottle Letter 6. A tale is not complete the instant the author pens the final word. No, it is not until the reader that takes the tomb in hand and the words enter their eyes, their heart. Only then does the story told in those pages truly come to life. One could say that you are not only the protagonist of this grand tale of adventure, but also, in a sense, one of its authors. Your thoughts, your decisions, your actions all serve to dictate the course of the story. And so we hope that you will continue to enjoy with all your heart your adventures here. May you ever continue to breathe life into this world. Sincerely, a teller of tales. This is Medium Bottle, Letter 7. Hello, friend. Are you perchance, and perchance enjoying the fireworks? You can be honest with me. After all, I'm just one of the humble artisans responsible for the show you saw today. To tell the truth, my colleagues and I are responsible for more than fireworks. Storms of pounding rain and bolts of lightning, auras that dazzle in the sky, mystic lights and the glowing of crystals. The lights and mists that you see upon the stage are all crafted by our hands. Fireworks are a fleeting thing, are they not? They dazzle the eye and move the heart, but in the next instant they turn to smoke, then fa fade and vanish without a trace. Think just for a moment of how it must feel to put one's heart and soul, and hours of blood, sweat, and tears, into creating something that lasts but an instant. But please do not misunderstand. We say this not out of bitterness, but with honor and pride. 
For nothing gives us greater pleasure than to know that our humble efforts have, even in the smallest of ways, helped your star shine all the brighter. And to know that we will continue to pour all of our inspiration and imagination into illuminating your grand stage. Yours in obscurity, a humble artisan. This is Large Bottle Letter 1. Fledgling adventurer, I pray this message finds you well. Though your journey has just begun, I sense you will yet make a name for yourself. We must all start somewhere, as I once did, and though not every avenue will lead to fame and glory, I have faith in you. Wherever your travels may lead, always remember this. You are not alone. When you stumble, there are those who would catch you. When you lose your way, there are those who would guide you back to your path. Perhaps someday you will be the one taking the lead, showing others how it's done. Until then, keep fighting the good fight, and may good fortune befall you. Yours, a fellow adventurer. This is Large Bottle Letter 2. It feels like only yesterday that the vows sworn on the shores of Silver Tear Lake marked the beginning of the seventh astral era. You may not remember me, but I was there alongside you. Well, figuratively speaking, as we launched the attack on the Praetorium. I'll never forget the way you cut through the Imperial lines like a hot knife through butter. My unit would have been slaughtered if you hadn't arrived when you did. I was sent back to my hometown to recover from my wounds, but I wish I could have thanked you in person. Still, I'm grateful for the chance to see my family again and would have you know that they appreciate your heroic deeds every bit as much as I do. Your comrade in arms, a fellow Grand Company soldier. This is Large Bottle Letter 3. I can still remember the day you came swooping into Ishgard on the back of the dragon. That dragon. I recall that it took even Sir Emmerich a moment to realize you were friend and not foe. I must admit, I was one of those archers preparing to fire upon your draconian steed. It's a good thing I was wearing my helmet, as I have no doubt my face was beat red with embarrassment when we saw it was you. Having said that, I'm sure I would have been lost among the crowd, as there were a fair few of us there to mark your return. Unfortunately, being one of the rank and file makes it rather difficult to directly express my gratitude for your brave deeds, which is why I chose to pen this letter. Even then, I must rely on the tides of fate to carry these words to you, though as you have proven, miracles can and often do happen. Ever your comrade, a devoted Temple Knight. This is Large Bottle, Letter 4. I'd been a member of the Resistance for years, not that we ever had much luck against the Garleans. It felt like we went from one defeat to the next, our numbers growing smaller each time. But that all changed when you and the Alliance arrived. Your brave deeds turned the tide not only here in El Amigo, but all the way over in Doma. From what I've heard, I'll bet these Imperials hardly knew what had hit them. Even though the fighting here has come to an end, we face a hard road ahead. 
We'll need to band together as never before if we are to heal the wounds inflicted upon our land by the Garleans. And yet we have faith. After all, it's you and your comrades who've given us this chance, and we'll be darned if we let it go to waste. You have our gratitude, hero. Ever your comrade on the battlefield, a former fighter of the Resistance. This is Large Bottle Letter 5. I snuck this letter on board a certain apparatus before it was sent hurtling backwards through time and space, as it wasn't accounted for on the storage log. I could begin to calculate where and when it will eventually arrive. Even if I were to succeed in sending it two centuries in the past, the odds that it will safely reach the hands of that hero of legend are infinitesimal. At best, and yet the chance is not zero, and it is in remote possibility that I place my hopes. My ancestor, the first of the name I now proudly bear, once told me that the hero he befriended was, for all of her many talents, above all a woman possessed of great fortune. Fortune that suggests that the twelve themselves truly did smile upon her. In that sense, it's not unreasonable to expect that it is indeed you who is reading my words today. And so I say, thank you, my friend. Thank you for saving our past and giving us hope for a brighter future. And above all, please look after him, won't you? Yours, Biggs, third of his name, 18th President of Garland Ironworks.